well the weather is far from ideal i have never fished this fishery before this is packington summers now i will be coming back here to do a full length film um, on this fishery i'll show you some of the lakes today however it's very very cold it's just two degrees it's forecast to rain all day the weather is going to be worse tomorrow so there is a storm coming the lake that i'm going to be fishing is little gearies never seen it before so i'm going to get some waterproof gear on i'm going to get my barrel loaded up and get down to the peg i think i'm going to be fishing somewhere between about permanent peg 8 and 13 that's where i've been told to fish so i'll see you down at the peg Well, this is peg 10 i think this is going to be the one for today it looks like i'm going to be the only one on this lake but as many of you will know when you're fishing these sorts of venues in winter when there are f1s in there that's not necessarily always going to work in your advantage because it just means the fish have got places to back off to but i can't control that this looks all right it's uh I don't know what sort of width we've got there probably it's a good 20, 20 22 meters something like that the water's very very clear as you can see which i was warned about but that's typical of winter fishing um it's peg 10 there is a little bit of cover over there i don't expect to be going really really tight over there today but so i'm going to be targeting that slightly deeper water it is winter it's very clear but there is a bit of cover over there so i'm going to try and get a brolly in the best i can get comfortable and get some gear out Well, I've decided against the brolly it's uh, that wind's been circling it's been coming round and round but to be honest the rain is easing up now and i've got the side tray box that's what that's for so that's going to keep the bait nice and dry okay i was in a match yesterday i fished the second round of the holcroft winter pairs so i actually traveled straight down here from there yesterday so i've got a bit of everything in the bait bag this is nice and waterproof anyway so so today we've got that is actually Bloodworm and Joker, which is left over from yesterday's match. I won't be using that today. Um, I've got some wafters and things, but the first thing I need to do is, I'm gonna be using maggots today. And these have been bagged up, as you can see, they've been bagged up for 24 hours, maybe, those. So I need to open those so that they come round because they'll be very, very dormant. So that's the first job I need to do. So I'm just gonna open these, let them come round, because we need them wriggling because we are gonna be using maggots today certainly in a maggot feeder we're going to be fishing for bites initially so let's get these open got red maggots i've got some white maggots as well but i've also got some pinkies which as most people know can be a great winter bait the first thing i want is a nice dry bait box done i don't want to be putting them into a, a wet bait box so i'm gonna do this now so by the time i'm set up these should have come round so the bait tray is going to be very simple today and very cheap as well which is obviously good so I'll let them come round they should be coming round by the time I get the rod out and set the rig up and everything I'm not going to be mixing any ground bait today I have got some but because the water's so clear I'm just not going to bother with it I've got some white maggots which could be a great change bait for the hook and that's the little feeder that I'm going to be using, but I'm not going to be using it in line, I'm going to be using it like a conventional feeder.
Well, the match that I was in yesterday was a completely different ball game from this. That was all about silverfish, uh, conventional feeder fishing, you know, the conventional rig, bloodworm and joker. So I'm going to need to change over the attachments. Quite a few people have asked about this in the past. They asked why I use different ones on different days. So I'll just quickly explain. Basically today, I'm going to be fishing with the rod in one position. So I'm not going to be having the rod on my knee, striking at little indications. And I'm hoping a lot of the bites we're going to get are going to be confident pulls and the fish are going to be on. So I need to change my attachments, all right? That is the butt rest that I normally use. Now I use that because the rod locates in there really nice and easy. It's very safe but it doesn't grip the, the, the butt of the rod. And that's why that's ideal when you're doing your normal conventional feeder fishing. When you're picking up on bites quickly and that sort of thing, that is why I use that butt rest, okay? I switch to that one for days like today and when I'm fishing the method feeder. There are loads of butt rests like this, different sorts of grips out there. And the reason why I use that one is because this one actually flex, flexes, okay and that will actually grip the butt of the rod so when you're method feeder fishing when you're fishing a self-hooking way of fishing that is why i always use that attachment when i'm fishing like i'm doing today and with a method feeder and likewise on the feeder arm itself i'm going to be having the rod in one position and that's why i always switch to that style feeder rest all right when i fished yesterday when you're fishing conventionally for bream or skimmers that is when we use those and that's because you're generally having multiple locations for your rod, all right? You might be picking up on bites quickly when you're speed fishing, that's why we use those. But when you're fishing with your rod in one position, that is why we use that style. Now we are on a commercial. I haven't got a big cast, as you can see. I don't know what that is to the other bank, 22 meters, something like that. I'm not gonna be going right across, so we don't need a long rod. The one I'm gonna to choose to use today, 3000 reel, okay, it's got eight pound line on it, which is a little bit heavier than normal, but this one's already set up. I've only got two or three hours. So I'm just going to go with eight pound, usually that would be six. All right, 3,000 reel, and I'm going to be using the commercial feeder, 11 foot. Just, it's a lovely, it's not really a soft rod, but it's ideal for F1's, you know, commercial fishing. But it will be ideal for silvers if we're catching silvers as well. So I'm just going to get this set up with a free running feeder rig. I'm going to keep this zipped up. We don't want that filling up with water, do we? That rain's going to continue. So the rig is really, really simple. I'm just going to fish with a free running feeder. All right, so all I've got is quite simply a snap link swivel. And I'm just going to have that free running, no shock leaders. This is mono, not braid. Okay, so that's just going to be free running. And then all we need is something to stop that with. So I'm just going to put a nice rubber stopper on. There are loads of different sorts. These are the matrix ones. They're really nice and small, as you can see. And with eight pound line, but even with six pound line, they do grip the line really well, which is something you need to think about. You know, the thicker diameter line that you're using, the more, the more it will grip them. So all I'm gonna do is I've threaded that on. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put a little overhand knot. I'm gonna go back up there about, I don't know, 12 centimeters or something. So I'm gonna put a, a double overhand knot in that line. All right, always wet your knots. And that will quite simply, that little knot there will just ensure that is not gonna slide down any further. It's just an insurance policy. And then at the bottom of that tag there, I'm just gonna put a loop and that is where I will attach my hook length. And that is it. A really simple rig. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing can go wrong with a nice simple rig like that. And the beauty about this sort of a rig with that stopper, is that I can actually, if I want to extend the length of the hook length or the tail, then I could just simply slide that stopper further up the main line and that'll make the hook length longer. And that is it. I'm going to fish with a free running uh, maggot feeder with a stem on it. Um, and I'm going to kick off with about 0, 0, 013 um, hook length line, which breaks at about four pound. And I'm going to kick off with a 16 and just kick off with double maggot. So all I'm going to do to find the range that I'm going to be fishing, just going to clip on a bomb. So I want to be nice and accurate. This is 17 and a half gram bottle bomb. Make sure I haven't already got a clip on, which I haven't. So I'm just going to go straight across in front of me. And I just want to be down that slope from the far bank. About there, I think. I think that's going to be about the right spot. So all I'm going to do is 
I'm going to fish there. So what I'm going to do is that's the spot I'm happy with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip up there, put the clip on. And then I can just quickly nip to the sticks and just find out exactly what that range is. So that if I do have to take the clip off for anything, if I hook a fish, then I know, know exactly what that range is so I don't have to mess about. Again, I can go back to that exact same spot. So these are two meters, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, just a fraction under 18 meters, fraction under. So now if I've got to take that clip off, I know I can go straight back to that same spot. All I need to do is just change the feeder over. Just take that stem off. That's for when you're fishing with it in line. Those maggots are just coming around a bit now. Um, yeah, just take that stem off and then I don't want to fish it in line today. I want to fish it more conventional. I know that's how most people fish with it. So it'll be interesting to see how that works on here. Just put that stem on there. That's it, nice and tight. And that just allows me to fish it with this free running rig. That's it, nice, simple. Not a lot to go wrong there, which is what I like. Hook I'm going to use is the MXC one. It's about obviously barbless. And it's already out 50 centimeters, which I think is going to be too long. So I'm going to halve that. We've got a little bit of a tag below the actual feeder itself anyway. So it's going to be probably 30 centimeters ish. Cut that about there. Just put that line in there out of the way. Don't want to go leaving line everywhere. And I'm just going to attach this loop to loop, which is the way that I always attach my hook lens for all my fishing. Just trim that off, put that line in there, out of the way. Then loop to loop is basically your main line through your hook lens loop, and then you push the hook through the main line loop. Simple as that. That rain's coming back again now. There we go. That's it. So as you can see, it's a nice, a medium lens, hook lens. Let's get out there. Well, I haven't fed anything. I am clipped up, so I'm just going to kick off with two. In fact, I'm going to kick off with a red and a white maggot. How about that? All I'll be doing is hooking the first one, the white one the point and then the red maggot through the fat end if you want to call it that okay and then just gonna be filling this feeder each time but as you can see it's only a tiny tiny feeder anyway don't want to pack it too tight because we do want the maggots to be able to get out they haven't quite come round fully yet to be fair so uh, they will come round on the course of the next half hour or so, I'm just going to go straight in front of me. Just feather that, line down. It's not very deep anyway. And no doubt, if there aren't really any fish on that line, I'm sure if there are any fish between here and there, we are going to get line bites or indications that there are some fish between here and the feeder but we'll find out so that's the the main way that i'm going to be fishing today so i haven't fed that line i haven't put anything in I'm just gonna be very patient obviously this water is very very cold and you've got to give those maggots time when the especially when they're not really like as much as what they will be um give them time to empty from the feeder in extreme circumstances when it's really cold this water is really really cold as you can see it's very clear you can open the holes out on the feeder so you could just get a pair of scissors, which I might have to do today because it's so cold and the maggots aren't riddling to the full potential anyway. So, and that'll just encourage you to, or encourage the feeder to empty quicker. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loose feed some maggots as well. So I've got a catapult ready. And what I'm gonna do is, there was a match on here yesterday and it was one with about 50 pound, somewhere here or down to my left. 
and it was one on the pole possibly with pellets but it was on the pole all pole fishing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to loose feed some maggots on a long pole line which is going to be about halfway but i'm going to do that to my right out the way so that if we are going to catch any fish on this line there isn't going to be any disturbance coming through that line playing fish and that sort of thing and just the action of me retrieving the feeder off this line coming through the water i want to leave an area where it's quiet and just because of the position of my rod and everything and i haven't got anybody to my right anyway i'm going to lose feed halfway with just a few maggots all right so maggots wise I'm just going to keep putting in about 10 maggots i'm going to pick a far bank marker so i'm going to aim for there's a platform just there so I'm just going to feed them on a long pole line just there and I'll just keep loose feeding a few maggots there over the course of this first hour and obviously what I can do is drop on that at any stage but what I'll do is I'll not drop on it with a feeder with this stem I can actually just put a bomb on it plus it is a snap link swivel so I can just take the feeder off completely and just put a little bomb on I just put a bomb over the top of that which is obviously going to be much more discreet but we'll see how we go on this i haven't had any indications yet but obviously you've got to get the maggots time to empty from the feeder I've had three casts now and on that last cast I had a little tiny indication I thought it was a line bite but when I reeled in one of the maggots has squashed so that was obviously a bite so hopefully there's one or two fish there now if I um, if I continue and I don't catch or I'm not seeing the indications I'll shorten that up length and I'm keeping six to eight maggots going in on that swim to my right which is about 12 meters out from the bank I'm sure we're going to catch on that later on, but it'd be nice to catch on this feeder line first. That's a more positive bite. Nothing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten that hook length now. No actual signs on the bait there, as you can see. No signs there. But there are definite indications of fish there. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to shorten that hook length. There you go, so that's much shorter now as you can see. All right, so I better stick with the red maggots because they're the only ones that we've had signs on. Top and tail again. I could even go down to single maggot, which I'll try. Might just be a good idea just to try that in a moment or in a little while, just to see what these fish are if we don't get one. It might highlight that they are small silver fish. But it's good that we're getting some indications now. I've been fishing for about an hour. We're definitely getting more indications than what we were, so that would suggest that they are coming to those maggots. And throughout the whole hour, still continue to loose feed some maggots to the right. Yes, there we go. First cast on that short hook length. And a couple of tiny little indications first. And I don't think it's a silverfish, it feels like a scrappy. Don't know if it's an F1. That's the beauty of fishing like this when you don't know what to expect. Oh, what have we got here? Let's have a look. Is it an F1? It was a great pull when it went. Yes, we've got one. We're off the mark. Well, I had a couple of quick little indications and then it just well it was on simple as that the hooks come out in the net oh, but it's cold it is it's freezing that is absolutely freezing what a beautiful fish look at the color of that whoops freezing cold absolutely freezing what a lovely chunky fish brilliant 
Oh, it's just great to get one. Pretty little fish. Let's get him back. That hook's just gone in the net. Double red mag at that time. That's first cast on the uh, on that short hook length. We'll be able to see him easily in that clear water. Great, we're off the mark. The beauty about fishing with maggots, you know, you don't know what you're going to get, and at this time of year, let's face it, sometimes you're just happy to get a few bites. These maggots are slowly coming round now. I'm just going to go back out there now. There was no messing with that bite, which was good. It was, it was just on. I bumped into a good friend of mine this morning, Phil Altimus, in the cafe. He fishes here a lot, and he said that there had been one or two occasions recently when shortening that hook length right down has really converted signs into fish and that's exactly what's just happened so thanks for that top tip phil and that was first cast on doing that so hopefully that might now lead to a, a run of fish but whatever happens I'm keeping them maggots going in on that right hand swim that right hand swim is completely different in the sense that yes obviously it's still with maggots but it's away from all the disturbance of me fishing here so it's a little bit quieter it's got the added attraction there we go I've just had a bite there straight away that was an indication straight away there we've got the added attraction obviously it's much quieter there it's got the attraction of, of the maggots falling through the water because we all know especially with F1s they can be sat off bottom even in winter so just the action of those maggots falling through the water can be enough to draw fish in and that's in the deepest part you know it's in where i am there i'm obviously in slightly shallower water but there that's the deepest water as well so there's three different things there what that swim has got that this swim that i'm fishing now hasn't so it's just a nice way of covering your options There we go, let's drop back. Is it on? Yes, it's on. Well, how about that? Just a quick pull and then everything just dropped back. I'm just trying to keep this fish over to the left. Just trying to kite to the right a little bit and I'm trying not, don't want it to go over there because I don't want it to interfere with that right hand loose fed line. It looks identical to the last fish, this one. Another F1, they're really light colour, aren't they? A lot of the F1s I've caught recently on some of the fisheries, have, they're much darker than this, but these ones are really light coloured. Same as the lot, last one. Well, how about that? Two fish in two casts with that short hook length. And look, oh, I thought that was down, but it's just in the corner of its mouth. Lovely fish, great condition. Well, how about that? Two in two. It just shows that sometimes, off you go, mate. Sometimes a tiny little change like that can uh, can transform everything. Unbelievable. We haven't changed anything other than the length of that hook length. Well, that's nice. Let's see if we can catch any more. And what I'll do is I'll keep going on this line. And then what I'll do is, regardless of what we're catching on this line, I'm going to give it about another 30 minutes actual fishing time. And then I'm going to clip on a, a tiny little bomb and have a look on that right hand swim. The rain stopped at the moment, which is much better. A lovely little feeders these, nice and discreet, nice little plop. It's just 15 gram the one that I've got on at the moment. Same strength, length, everything else is the same as what we kicked off with. It's an 013 hook length, which breaks at about four pound. So we should be able to land pretty much almost anything really. Even big fish at this time of year, when the water's so cold, they slow down. You know, that's why you can land them really big fish on relatively light tackle. Keep them maggots going in. That was an indication there straight away again. So it looks like there's a few fish there now. But that was a, well, you saw the bite. 
no messing not little indications and things that one was actually a drop back that one the other one just just virtually pulled the rod in that must be on yes there we go got a couple of casts without without any signs so I was just beginning to wonder if the fish had moved because I wasn't getting any indications this one's going down to the left which is good that means it's down away from that bomb line but yeah I was just beginning to think the fish had moved I was just thinking about my next my next move whether that was might have been a cast to the left a little bit to see if they'd spooked it out of the peg looks like it's another little F F1 it is really lightly coloured aren't they lovely as you, as you saw a really positive bite the rain's back again I've just looked at the temperature gauge on the van and it's it's down to one degree now well he's taken that down hasn't he shows you how confident that is get the disgorger on that one we can see it just there the hook see it just inside there we go same as the other two brilliant freezing cold really cold on the hands but yeah the temperature is now just down to one degree so it's actually getting colder the rain's back but this is december you know real winter fishing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a, I'm going to have a couple more casts on this line see if we can catch any more on this one and see if we can catch a different stamp of fish and then i'm going to have a drop on that bomb line that we've been priming double red maggot as you can see on a 16 we might catch, even catch on single maggot i'm gonna stick to that it'd be nice to get a different a different fish but as you just saw then the bite was just virtually out of the blue you know really confident when they're on so let's see if we can get a couple more on this line and then it's gonna be time to have a look on that on that bomb line that we've been priming Bovril time I think it's a must at this time of year a nice hot drink keep those maggots going in Pour a cup of bovril out, that'll get you a bite. This feels a little bit better, this one. Yeah, much slower, this one. Yeah, much slower, this one. It could be a different species, this one. Let's take his time with him, see if we can get him out. It's going darker and darker. The rain's still coming. But if the tip keeps going round, we don't care. Yeah, definitely a different fish, this one. Could be a proper carp this one much much slower much slower I'll try not to let him go to the right I don't want to ruin that bomb line if there is any fish on it I might see it quite early this fish with the water being so clear much slower this one it's a heavier fish oh yes look at that is that a great big F1 I think it might be a big F1. There we go, it is. Beautiful. Much bigger fish that one. Yeah, I'll get that one. That is a good fish. Just looked in the corner of the mouth. And the bite was different as well, wasn't it? I might have broke the hook has it oh no it's not the hook's just come out and shook the hook off well that's a nice fish isn't it turn him around for you won't be able to hold that one for long <laughs> beautiful fish that's freezing cold let's get him back 
off you go mate well that's a nice surprise so we said we we're gonna have two or three more casts on this line didn't we so we've got to have another cast and then we're gonna have have a look on that bomb line that was on the bovril that one a bovril bite just pop that there where i'll get these get this rig back out there i don't want to leave the leave the lid up on this leave the lid up on this side tray box any longer than i need to because those maggots will be getting wet and keep those maggots going in give them some interest close that down it's a really nice simple rig this you know there's nothing there that can go wrong and because it's free running you can obviously use it on on all the commercial fisheries we go to now because you know some fisheries don't allow fixed rigs so with this being free running it's one that you can use just about everywhere I thought that was going to develop then really positive pull all the other bites that would have just carried on going there but that, that's not carried on going so I'm just going to leave it that might mean that the bait is bush now I'm quite confident to just leave it in a bit longer in case it does go but I'll leave it in for about another minute or so if it doesn't go I'll bring it in because that like I said that bait might be smashed now or it, it might have been taken off the hook There we go. That's got to be on. Oh, it's come off. Oh, I pricked it. I don't think that was a liner or anything. That was a, a proper, proper bite. I just haven't hooked up right. Oh, there's quite a bit of rubbish on the hook. Look at that. It's like pulled into some weed or something. That was definitely, uh, definitely a bite. And definitely a fish. So let's get back out there. Hopefully it's not spooked them. I just want to catch one more on this. Let's go back out with double maggot. I just want to catch one more on this line before we switch to the bomb. I just hope that's not spooked any out of the peg. Get back out there. About two metres off that other bank. So it's just down that slope, down into that deeper water. I was beginning to wonder early on that was too, I was too far across those fish have obviously come to those maggots so it must be a depth that they're, they're comfortable with he's got to be on well that's taken a while to come that one but we've got one on that last chuck on this line he's like a little f1 i think it's just nice to finish on this line before we go on that bomb line but it has definitely gone quieter out there i thought the disturbance of that last bigger fish what we had had spooked any fish out of the swim or out of that spot hey what have we got here no skimmer is it <laughs> yeah i think it is skim bob there we go first one today very cold as you can imagine perfect condition beautiful condition just in the corner of its mouth well that's a nice little surprise so that's it it's time to go on that bomb line i'm sure we're going to catch on that line i'm sure so i'm going to switch this feeder for a tiny little bomb and we'll keep the same hook length and everything even the same hook bait double maggot and just drop on that line and see if there's any fish there so all I'm going to do is just quickly take the feeder off I could do that with a snap link swivel and I'm going to put on this really tiny little bomb okay so we want to be really discreet we've been feeding this line now for nearly two hours so we'd like to think that there's going to be some fish there so the last thing we want to do is go spooking them with a great big heavy feeder or a great big heavy bomb just doesn't make sense does it to line some fish up and then go spook them as soon as you go on there trying to catch so might as well keep the same hook bait double 
live maggot. And that is it. I can still continue loose feeding over the top, obviously, with the catapult. All I'm going to do is just move the feeder arm around a little bit, just so I've got a better angle. Because I'm fishing more to the right now. And I'm sure even if we don't catch anything straight away, if there's any fish there, they'll, they'll let us know with indications on the tip and everything. So let's get this right where we've just been loose feeding. It's a little bit too far, so I'll just let it swing back a bit. See, it's tighten up to that. I've literally just had a cup of Bovril. Just answered a few of the messages that I'd got on my phone before I went on this line. And in the space of 10 minutes, <laughs> it stopped raining and there are actually little bits of blue sky poking through, which is very unexpected. They're expecting a storm coming through tomorrow as well so i thought it was just going to go right the way through but so that bit of the forecast wasn't quite right but thankfully it's worked in our favor at the moment anyway but i'm very confident of catching something on this line like i said we've fed it now for for two hours and i can still continue to loose feed maggots over the top I've completely abandoned that feeder line now, that line that, we'd, that we've been fishing. I'm not going to loose feed anything on that or anything like that, just leave it alone now. Just keep trickling a few maggots over the top of this bomb. We've already had one skimmer, so there are obviously silverfish in here, so I'll be very surprised if we don't catch on this. Full then, he's got to be on. Yes, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Wow, look at him going. Well, I didn't expect that. I was expecting a silverfish or something, but whatever it is, it's very strong. That's first cast. It's been in about four minutes. Well, fantastic. And surprisingly, there weren't any indications before the bite. I expected if there were any fish there, that you might be getting, you know, one or two liners or indications, but there was nothing. It was just straight into the bite. Which is great, that's exactly what you want. Is it a carp or an F1? Beautiful. Well, that's it. This line's had two hours to actually build up. So I would have been very shocked had we not caught anything, but there we go. He's a slightly darker coloured fish. Just about to get my hand around him. Just in the corner of the mouth. Beautiful fish. Great start on that line. Let's see if there's any more down there with him. Oh, right off you go. The great thing about fishing with double maggot is that your bait's gonna stand out. You can feed quite a few maggots. And even if there are a lot of single maggots there, obviously yours is double, so it's still gonna stand out. So I'm gonna keep flicking maggots over the top of this whilst I'm actually fishing it as well. Because I just think that maggots falling through the water are going to help draw fish in as well. And that may have spooked any other fish that were there now, obviously, all that, that disturbance. Especially the way that it ran. That was a lovely clean bite anyway, it's exactly what we want. Doesn't appear to be many silverfish feeding. I'm just going to put... About eight to ten maggots over the top. That's it. Another indication there. Is that on? I thought that was on. That was definite sign straight away. One of the maggots has gone. Well, that was 
very quick that one wasn't it let's get another maggot on and this will probably catch up and go directly over the top of the ones I've just actually loose fed What I'm going to do is, is increase the frequency of putting maggots in now just to try and push it for this final part well it's the last bit of daylight to be fair so I'm just going to keep flicking you know four maggots just to get some falling through the water and see if that will help keep some fish there no mistake in there just stopped him then again that's been in about the same amount of time about four minutes again just positive pulls out the blue really surprised at that i thought if there was one or two there milling about on those loose fed maggots that we'd be getting one or two liners is this foul up or is it wrapped round it I don't know if it's foul up this one. Oh no, it was just wrapped round it. Yeah, I'm very surprised at that. I thought we might have had a few liners first, but I'd rather not. It's much better being this way. It left one. Just a comfortable hand size, that one. Looks right. Oh, in the corner again. As you can see. Lovely conditioned fish, that one again. Fighting really hard, actually say how cold it is and how cold they are well it just goes to show that fishing with maggots in winter pretty much most species will eat maggots so it just goes to show that even in the depths of winter you can still have a fantastic day's fishing you could probably tell by the breath coming out of my mouth that it's really gone down in temperature again now it's really gone cold but it's been a fantastic session fantastic venue hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have